all of you have waited long for this, but it's finally time for the finale of Item Feud Season 2. Brayden and Pikachu are battling. We're going to see who can come up with the best submission while also being the best at using items. Brayden won last season, and Pikachu didn't even participate in the first season, so it's going to be hard for them. However, we saw what Pikachu could do last round. Let's see if they can do it a second time. But first, Yoshi, who was eliminated last now and has given us a eulogy from the grave. They said, I forgot about confessionals. I guess there will only be eulogies from here on out, pensive. Don't worry, everyone else forgot about them too, Yoshi. Anyway, Yoshi Awesome here, and despite being hesitant to join this season, I'm very glad I did. I improved quite a bit and made it through 20 whole episodes. As much as I wanted to be in a super cool 1v1 with someone, I made poor decisions with my items and it ended up being my downfall. Best of luck to Pikachu and Brayden. And guess what? My new item is about to show up. That's right, Yoshi made an item called Sunglasses Sunglasses. When used on an opponent, you blind most of their punctuation vision and they'll only be able to use one form of punctuation on their next submission. When used on yourself, you become cool and receive a 1% boost every time you use a form of punctuation in your submission, although you're limited to a boost of 5%. Thanks so much for your eulogy and item, Yoshi. To commemorate you, your item will not be used to go into anyone's inventory because this is the final round. You're welcome. Now, for this round, I've separated the votes on contestants and non-contestants, so the percentiles of the contestants will be more spread apart and your submission being good will actually be a determining factor in your placement. On the top here, you're going to see each contestant's inventory. As you can see, there's a lot that could happen with these items. These lines are going to come down from the top of the screen and stop when they reach the contestant's score. They're also going to move based on the items used in their boosts and penalties. For the finale, we got 13 votes. That's two more than last season's finale. Let's go. All those voters will get a little Luigi point for their service. Glad to see we're growing. All right, let's see those results now. <laughs> That's not good for Pikachu. Don't worry though, Pikachu slapped Brayden to bring them down. Oh, and I'm not forgetting that all penalties and boosts are doubled this time. Well, they also used an Acme crate to use orange juice on themselves twice and Brayden won. Uh, they used the Jettison to trade their disarm for a boost. Pikachu also used cute animal and sent me this picture to get a boost. Well, they also used Angel's Halo Saving Grace item. Without items, they would have been in the red zone, so they get a boost. Luckily, Pikachu used their no new items pensive to get back two of their flowers. Of course, they used them. It's still not enough to defeat Brayden though, but Pikachu does have one more item they need to use, their Double Down. They double every boost they've gotten so far, giving Pikachu a humongous boost. <laughs> they've done it. Using items, they've got past Brayden's amazing item skills and gotten over a 100% boost from their items. But did you really think that Brayden would go down so easily? Even without using items, Brayden has a trick up their sleeve. Let's see what they got. If they want to, they can send a video of them stapling bread to get a 3% boost for a round. But it's just a 3% boost, you say? Well, actually it's a 6% boost since everything is doubled, but also, take a look at this. the power of stapling multiple pieces of bread onto a tree, Brayden has got themselves a 114% boost, bringing themselves almost a 200% percentile. This is even bigger than Pikachu's boost. Can you believe they did this without using any items the whole season? Well, maybe they're forced to use one by a forced hand, but uh, oh, they used a hug on, on round 11 and a page on round 16. Uh, well, th they did this without using any items this round. Uh, wait, wait. No, that's not true either. Brayden actually used the item... Trick! 
this round to fool you guys into thinking they could win just by stapling some bread to a tree. Did you really think that would work? Did you fall for it? That was a good one, Brayden. Now both you and Pikachu have successfully tricked people. Unfortunately, though, that staple of bread's only gonna get you a 6% boost, meaning Pikachu has won Item Feud Season 2! Congratulations, Pikachu! You proved to us you're the best at writing submissions and using items. Along the way, you've helped the teams... <laughs> Everyone calm down, it's just a team name. What could go wrong? Yellow Team and Cloud Gang. I'm sure those teams are proud of you. Since you've won Item Feud Season 2, you get 1,000 entire little Luigi points, making you the person with the th third most points. Brayden is above you, by the way, and they just won 100 little Luigi points for getting second. Great work, guys. Thanks so much for taking the time to participate and giving me amazing ideas for, um, for, for nothing. For no it's nothing. Thanks to all the other contestants for participating and drawing fan art as well. Speaking of fan art, Ice Cream has actually made fan art for each of their submissions. First, their amazing sandwich submission that had a bunch of crazy deadly stuff in it. Here we can see Ice Cream finding a treasure chest but getting interrupted by pirates like in their round 3 submission. Next, Ice Cream finds a crime scene that involves themselves in the woods like in their round 4 submission. Here, Ice Cream impersonates a lesser known actor and becomes a star. Uh, in this one, um, Ice Cream wears sneakers that may or may not have Among Us on them. Here, Ice Cream is enjoying their temperature soda that changes based on the temperature of the environment. Then, Ice Cream predicts some ridiculous nonsense that doesn't make any sense. Then they cryogenically freeze the Ice Age baby. Suddenly, they order a big chungus that they themselves are selling. Next, they show what it's like to eat their literally everything bagel. Then they drink orange juice and realize it's a terrible idea as it's poisoned. Next, we get to see Ice Cream's force field chair that stops them from falling over. Here, they've drawn a YouTube poll that shows who deserves to win item feud. Next, Ice Cream shows us the importance of sticky notes and gives examples on how to use them. Next, they rename their tomato to tomato fingers as shown here. Then they draw a defective pencil sharpener that only sharpens one side. And finally, they drew something for this final round too. You can see Max Facto, Chicken, Ice Cream, and Squish using a ton of items at this crazy location. Thanks for all the fan art you've given us, Ice Cream. JMO also made fan art of JMO the Collider meeting their stick figure counterparts. Oh, I still need to tell you the other items that were used this round. Pikachu tried to use their happy gun on Brayden and their magic goggles, but those were item jammed by Yoshi last round. Pikachu also cloned their mirror with an infinity bucket and used both mirrors just in case Brayden did something. They also used an inversion on Brayden's flower which would make their flower give a 10% penalty. How evil. Finally, Pikachu used the item vegan on Brayden's acme crate, two orange juices and an item vegan. All this was for nothing since Brayden only used a trick. In other news, Brayden finally overtopped Psy on the percentile statistic. Psy did really good this season in that one round, so I'm surprised Brayden finally passed them. In actual percentile though, Psy still defeats everyone as expected. The highest actual percentile anyone has gotten is 85.07%, which an accountant got, so congratulations for that. Meanwhile, Lady Molob had the highest standard deviation out of everyone for this round, but excluding this round, the highest standard deviation a submission got was Jamo's round 6 submission, where they bring two single devilos together to form a double devilo. Pikachu made the longest submission that has ever been made for this round, as it was 740 characters long. Impressive. Our shortest submission, however, was made by JMO, and it was the happy gun is the sad gun. How beautiful. Finally, we must look at the popularity contest. Not including this episode, Ice Cream has climbed their way to the top and has become the most popular. Percy used to be the leader and then Angel tried to defeat them, but Ice Cream swooped in and stole the lead. Amazing work. The most mentions received in one episode is Angel's 28 mentions they cheated in. The next most is Super Rainbow's 13 mentions in episode 12 where they abused Ice Cream. If you want to look at the stats sheet yourself, then go into the description. You can also find all the submissions and randomize one to see what you get. Oh frick, I forgot to actually show you the results. You guys haven't even seen which submission was Brayden's and Pikachu's. Here, Molob's submission was very controversial, probably because they have no idea how to freaking cloning machine works. It's not how it works. Uh, but anyway, but once again, we see men. We see. Minute 25 has, um. Message in the beginning. The controversial, the least, um. What is this? Do you want to write this script? Of Yeah, so like uh, they're the least controversial and their, their submission is stupid or whatever. I wouldn't pay attention to it. Look, for words on the... Oh god, what was I talking about? Okay, so, um, thanks for participating in the past six and a half months or whatever, and blah 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 blah, I gotta go, bye! Oh no, my god. Oh no.
Rainbow Rainbow started a quiz show. Dude, episode season two, episode seven, eight point two. Quiz. He's per. Oh, uh, not this again. Especially to my patrons, Angel, Corvix, Omelette, Frizzle, and Percy. Thanks for all the advice on what to do with your new subs. <laughs>